I got a phone call about uh, 18 months ago from Marvin Krislov, president of Overland, who had just had dinner with John Kander. Apparently, John had expressed some desire to do a play, one of his plays, here at Overland College. And he felt that Flora the Red Menace would be the perfect thing. Flora the Red Menace was the first produced show that uh, Fred Ebb and I wrote. It's kind of an ideal piece for a college production because of the youth of the people involved. And even though we're not in that kind of depression that I remember very well and that this piece takes place in, there are similarities in the terrors of going out to meet the big bad world as it really exists. All right, I don't know what good it's going to do you. I played Flora, uh, Flora Mazaros, who is um, an aspiring artist in the 1930s, um, and she falls in love with a communist, Harry. I've never seen you in these parts. I played Harry Tukarian, who is a struggling communist artist in New York City in the 30s. Um, he's a really interesting character. Uh, actually, probably my favorite character I've, I've played here. He has a, a speech disability, a stammer, which is actually very different from a stutter I learned. And I, 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 I took the liberty of, of, of bringing that quotation to join the party. And I'm playing Charlotte, the communist leader in Lord of the Red Menace. Um, and she's basically just a manipulative communist woman. It's also about a particular period in our history. It's about the 30s, it's about the Great Depression. And it's about the incredible resilience of artists especially. There is an Oberlin trait, at least the people who come into New York and, and who are in the theater, of not just sitting back and being passive, but of trying to make something happen. I thought this is the perfect play to be doing right now. I wasn't really quite sure about the 1930s or really even about this musical, so I watched a lot of YouTube clips. Mrs. Stanley, Miss Smith are both. And then once we started to get into rehearsals, it turned more into self-exploration. Matt at one point was like, you know, this is the funny girl of Kander and Ebb. It, she became more of myself because I'm, <laughs> people have told me, I, they described it as that I have a very colorful way of speaking. <laughs> So she's got all these different voices that she does. The, the biggest one I think that people notice is the, the high fashion New Yorker. Such a help to my career. I went straight to like six or seven books um, about communism in America in the 1930s and just communism in general and the Communist Manifesto. I thought you were being murdered. And then did a, <laughs> hilarious, um, some research in like dominatrix and power and sex and and I would spend a lot of time walking around the campus in pants and boots. I bought myself some army boots. This is actually the hardest part I've ever played in my life. Um, I'm, I'm a singer-songwriter, so that's kind of like what my passion has been other, other than theater. I always hated musicals because it was some the type of singing that I just couldn't ever figure out. You know, it's just powerful singing. And uh, so when I got the part, I was I was terrified because I'm, you know, the leading lead male in the musical. And there's, I mean, a lot of really, you know, kind of songs in the play. And so I worked a lot with Ian and Corey, who is uh, in the cast as an ensemble member, as a vocal major, on uh, strengthening my voice. And that was that alone was one of the best things I've ever done at this school. As far as the stuttering goes, I just walked around campus every day going, uh, 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 bub, 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 bub. And then the King's Speech came out right after I got the part, and I was really upset because everybody would be comparing me to Colin Firth, and I was obviously the better choice, but. Up six. Right up the school.